I remember the carnival. Bright lights and sounds. The smell of deep fried food and the promise of prizes. I remember holding my dad's hand as he led me through the circuit of all the kiddie rides I wanted to go on. Displaying a patience that I now admire. Now that I have children of my own, I know how frustrating it can be to take a five-year-old through a carnival. Wish I could say I had the same patience and calm understanding that he had. My dad had offered to take me out that day so mom could have a day to herself. Parenting is hard work. He thought she deserved some rest. No five-year-old to take care of, just her doing whatever she wanted for an afternoon. Carnival had been an ideal distraction. We'd just gotten off the mini roller coaster with the cartoon dragon figurehead, the kind that goes along a small round track and isn't much fun for anyone, although I was good and convinced that I had been having fun on it. How couldn't I be having fun? I was at the carnival with my dad, and that was the best place I could be. I wanted to go on that ride again. I wanted to go on every other ride. I wanted ice cream and poutine and candy and cake. My child brain was wired on sugar and adrenaline and ready to explode. All right, sport, which one next? My dad asked me. And I honestly had no idea which ride it would be. I wanted to go on them all. There's the Scrambler, there's the Funhouse, there's the Strawberries, uh, Jalopy Junction. That name caught my attention. Jalopy Junction, I repeated. The words sounded funny because I didn't know what they meant. I couldn't read, but I saw my dad gestured to a nearby ride. It was a pretty basic, simple ride. A bunch of cars moving along a track, like a train. No bumps, no stress. It was designed for little kids, and so it was perfect for my dad and I. Yeah, I want that one, I said, already heading over to it. The multicolored cars looked like old 1930s era vehicles, and they were set against a painted backdrop of a junkyard. There was an old rundown shed, as well as a couple of worn, beaten cars like the ones on the track. Hanging off the street lamps, road signs, and the shed sat various goofy-looking cartoon vultures, their big eyes looking off in multiple directions. They seemed to be silently chuckling like lunatics. Far in the background loomed pointed, snow-peaked mountains, and roads that led over hills to nowhere. Street signs announced the name of the ride, the words, You are here, above them. There were various other road signs scattered about, too. Looking back on it now that I'm older, it seemed a little too spooky to be the backdrop of a children's ride, but as a child, I hardly noticed it at all. There wasn't much of a line, and so I ran up to the gate eagerly as my dad caught up to me, smiling sheepishly at the operator. The operator smiled back at him as my dad handed over his tickets. I remember distinctly that there was a large round hole in the operator's upper lip. I swear I could see his teeth through it. He helped buckle my dad and I into our seats in the cars. We were the only two riders for that go-round. Keep your hands inside the car at all times and don't get out until the car is fully stopped, he said. It was a practice warning I had heard countless times before, and I just wanted to go already. I didn't need to wait long. Much to my glee, the ride slowly started to move. The cars went down the track in their slow, methodical circuit. I grinned from ear to ear as the cars ran the track, watching as the carnival passed us by. My dad smiled at the world around him, looking around at the carnival, and I just enjoyed the motion. It gave me a spike of adrenaline, although I wouldn't have recognized it at the time. I was having fun, though. As the backdrop passed us, I saw one of the vultures painted on the backdrop. The one perched on the shed, flapping its wings. I turned my head to look, but it was already passed. I watched as the backdrop came round again. This time, there was no vulture there. But I swore I could see the head of another vulture turning to look at me. The ride went faster. Having fun, buddy? My dad asked, keeping me close so I wouldn't be overcome with my own stupidity and attempt to climb out of the car. I was having fun, I thought, although I was starting to feel dizzy. The backdrop passed again, and I saw more vultures this time. The car was speeding up. Another pass, and the sky seemed darker. The backdrop should have passed, but it didn't. The car kept going, but now all I could see was the backdrop. I couldn't see the carnival anymore. I couldn't hear it or smell it either. All I could smell was old motor oil, and all I could hear was the greedy cries of buzzards. I looked at my dad, expecting his calm smile, but there was no such thing. He looked confused. No, he, no, he looked afraid. I realized, much to my horror, that he had no idea what was going on. And then the ride stopped. It was an abrupt, jerking halt that slammed us against the safety bar. I looked around, wide-eyed and afraid at the world around me. All I saw were run-down cars. 
They still looked cartoonish, but now they seemed more like plastic models than parts of a drawing. What the hell? I heard my dad say softly. I felt the safety bar lifting as he pushed it off of us and he exited the car. I wanted to scream for him to stop. I was too afraid. Where? Dad took a few steps away from the car, clearly confused. I moved to try and follow him, but he held up a hand to stop me. Tony, stay there, he said. And I did as I was told. I just looked around at my new surroundings. It was a scrapyard of some sort. I recognized the shed in the distance as the one that I'd seen in the backdrop, and beyond that I recognized the snow-peaked mountains in the distance. I spotted a familiar sign a few feet away from where my dad stood. It read, You are here. And beneath it, Jalopy Junction. I looked back at the shed and spotted a vulture atop it, big and dark blue with long, yellow neck that curved like a worm. Its eyes looked in odd directions and reminded me of the googly eyes we put on some of our art projects at school. What the hell? I heard my dad whisper. He spotted the nearby vulture and backed towards the car, although a glance quickly confirmed that there was no way to start it or move it. We were stuck. I saw another vulture, identical to the first with its writhing worm-like neck, come in for a landing on a shiny red stop sign. Its googly eyes focused on nothing. It let out a throaty giggle. Just remembering that giggle still sends shivers down my spine. My dad stared at the vulture, eyes fixated on it. The vulture just giggled again. It was a light-hearted, cartoony sort of giggle, like Goofy from the old Disney cartoons. <laughs> The giggle was answered by another, identical giggle from a third vulture. Neither of us had noticed it landing on a sign offering used tires. <laughs> the vulture giggled. I could hear its companions responding in turn. My dad inched towards the car, but the vulture on the stop sign spread its wings, flapping them violently. <laughs> this laugh was more menacing, like a, like a threat. That was all the provocation my dad needed. He turned on a heel and dashed towards the car where I sat, petrified with fear. The vultures took flight again, the three that I saw, and countless others I didn't see, and they moved faster than my dad. Tony! He grabbed the car before the first vulture struck him and sent him sprawling onto the ground. He let out a frightened cry that quickly turned to pain as its beak dug into his flesh. Dad! I moved to get out of the car and help him, but another vulture landed on the hood of the car, spreading its wing in defiance. <laughs> its wild, googly eyes focused on nothing, but the fear of it set me back against the seat of the car. The force of the movement made the car move ever so slightly, but it was enough. The vulture took off and the car kept going backwards. The last thing I remember was seeing the vulture surrounding my dad and his horrified, choked screams of agony. Then the car took me away. The world was spinning. The screams didn't stop, but they slowly faded. Tears streamed down my cheeks as the car went faster and faster. Was I still going backwards or was I going forwards again? I had no idea. I couldn't be sure. I saw the vultures gather around my father. I saw his hand reaching out from their massive blue bodies and, and wormy yellow necks. I saw their beaks stained red with blood and their googly eyes looking all about. I could see the strips of red meat in their beaks as they swallowed. I felt so sick. I wanted to vomit. I wanted to get out, see if I could save him, but I couldn't. The screams faded, and all that was left was the sound of the carnival around me. Slowly, the car eased to a stop again, and the operator ran up to me. Jesus, Kitty, all right? I saw genuine concern in his eyes. I saw them widening as he realized my dad wasn't on the ride with me. He hadn't known what had happened. He hadn't seen. Not like I had. Where's your dad? He asked, clearly confused. He took a step back, looking around as if expecting him to have fallen out or something. That, that would have been the most logical thing, right? Still crying, I looked over at the backdrop and I... I'll never forget what I saw. The cartoon vultures were in their proper places. They didn't move. There didn't seem to be anything awry. Not, not, at, not at a glance, anyway. But besides the old wooden shed, 
I could see the white bones on the ground. A cartoon skull with a few cartoon bones and I... And I knew. They never found my dad. The police decided that he used the ride to abandon me somehow. They, they chalked it up to just some deadbeat father trying to get out of it. But all these years later, I know. I know that's a lie. Even if no one else does. I've got kids of my own now. And it's been years since I thought about Jalopy Junction. I think a, a part of me chalked up to a bad dream. Told myself that my dad was dead. He'd been in an accident that day. I told myself that vultures weren't real. And last week, I took my sons to a carnival. I hadn't been to one since the day I lost my dad, and I honestly found myself enjoying it. The memories of the silly little kids' rides came flooding back. And as I did them with my... What should we do next? I asked my boys. My oldest son, Kyle, pointed to one ride across the midway. What about that one? He asked. And I looked up to see what he meant. Jalopy Junction. My heart skipped a beat. I found myself staring at those same vultures, those same old cars, that same junkyard. The fear would have subsided quickly. I could have justified it all as some horribly twisted bad memory from childhood. I could have justified going on that ride again, but even from where I stood, I could still see the white bones by the shed. I don't... I don't think I'll ever be going back to the carnival. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you for watching today's video. And if you're on the podcast, then thank you for watching today's podcast. And if you're on uh, not the video or the podcast, then thank you for tuning into this telepathic broadcast. Oh, and there's something I need to mention to all of you. It's actually the big Halloween surprise. I mentioned this early on in the summer, but I never really got a chance to say what it was, because it wasn't really nailed down at the time. We, and by we, I mean me, Creeps McPasta, and Mew are going on tour across the United States in October. All the dates for it have been nailed down as of actually today, and tickets should be going on sale as of actually today. If you'd like to find out more, I'm going to have a bunch of information in the description down below all the way up until the tour is finished. But if you want to get a hold of your tickets, all the venues we've chosen have very limited seating, so make sure you get your tickets now if we're heading to a town near you. And one of the most exciting things about this is that I've been able to work with Mew across the United States doing conventions over the past couple of years. But this is the first time I think that Creeps McPasta is coming to the U.S. And it's especially the first time I'm going to be able to work with him live on stage. So this is going to be a show that's bigger than anything I've ever dreamed of being able to do in my entire YouTube career. So check it out down below at MarginWalkerPresents.com to get a hold of your tickets and come see us to celebrate Spooktober. Especially, I want to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys over at patreon.com slash MrCreepyPasta are the best. Especially, Trace Miles, Talon Karlick, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Dr. Strawberry, Daniel Polson, Champinsky, Ken Lando Higuchi, Rev Miroku, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Nicholas Said El Yassin, Buddy Burrows, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Goonington, G. Weevil 3, Chance Burnett, Diana Krauss, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Titty Connoisseur, Melissa Swaygart, Kudir Max, Jay Kerbine, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, Chris Wrights, The Ginger Bros, Mads Beck Lorenzen Post, Don Mulmeister, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Andrew Stenberg, Jason Silsma, Steampunk Center, and Rafael Rodriguez. If you guys would like to join them, you can head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. And that's it for tonight. Sweet dreams, everyone.